Hello everyone and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today we're going to go on a tangent. <laughs> a computer tangent. That's right. This is one of the systems we picked up in that large e-waste mega haul in our last video. And I had just seen this desktop case, I guess you can say. But when I look at this case, I just said, you know what? I've never heard of Tangent before. I definitely want to do my next video on this system, kind of go through the system, explore it, find out what's inside of it and what we can do to restore it. So that's what we'll be doing on today's video. You know what? We have lots to do as always. So let's get right to it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is talk about the actual name Tangent. So this system itself is in a desktop form factor. And the reason I was confused about tower versus desktop is that you're able to stand it up on the end and, you know, utilize it that way as well. This system has been quite used. So a special call out to the Rebel. They commented on this and indicated that it looks like Tangent makes medical grade computers. So systems that are required for the medical industry. So, I mean, from the front, it seems like a pretty standard PC. I do like this cool kind of design here. It has like the see-through plastic uh, in the front here, which is pretty neat. And so on the left-hand side, we have a couple accessible USB ports and, of course, a couple audio jacks in the front. I love that on systems ever since they started introducing that. It's just quick access easy to use, etc. Then we have a DVD reader here, as simple as that, just a DVD reader. I don't know if it can do anything else, doesn't signify that it does. We have a couple blank ports here, but it looks like they're of the three and a half inch format here. And again, these are just bezel, front bezel covers. So I imagine you could probably put a floppy drive in here if you needed to. They have Windows Vista here as well. And that's something we haven't covered on the channel yet is Windows Vista. We've done a lot of other operating systems and things like that. So, I mean, depending on what's inside the system, I don't know what it is in terms of a hard drive or is there anything left in it. My gut feeling is if this was used in a medical type environment that that would have been removed by their IT team. And yeah, so, I mean, we have the option, you know, if there's license keys on it, we may as well uh, experiment with Windows Vista on this. And then we have Intel Core 2 Duo inside, so for the CPU. And then we have our power button in the front, ATX power supply, and then our Tangent logo here. And, you know, quite frankly, it's just a sticker. <laughs> Normally you would see like anything to do with a computer brand to have that uh, more engraved or something more permanent, but I can literally peel that right off. Not going to because I want to restore the system, but yeah, definitely cool. Let's go to the side here. We don't have much on the side here. Uh, let's just look it up here. We have what looks like an external fan, extra ventilation on here. And the system is quite heavy. It doesn't look very big, but I mean, it's, it's very, it's made very well. No doubt to put a monitor on top as well. So we're going to be exploring that. And then we also have the model number, which is kind of like washed out here. It says model pendant, I think, uh, 31LP8. I'm not sure if that's the exact model. A lot of it's been scratched out there, so I'm not sure. And it gives the part number, volts, tangent, airport boulevard in Burlingame, California. One triple eight tangent. There we go. So uh, we're going on a tangent, so let's keep on going here. I know, bad pun. Okay, on the back, I really like this because, I mean, it doesn't seem very proprietary in terms of the motherboard, at least. We'll discover more as we open up the case and see what's inside. But this just looks like a typical I.O. shield that's here with all the different ports on the back. We have two PS2. We have a COM port. We have a parallel port. Again, in business, definitely important having those depending on the age of the system. We have built on graphics by the looks of things. Not sure what's included there. Four USB ports on top of the two that we already have in the front. We have an Ethernet port. Imagine it's gigabit in this system and then three additional audio ports. And then we have what, to me, I would say is a proprietary um, uh, PSU that's here. Pretty, pretty tiny. Hoping this system powers up at least and see if we can get some life out of that power supply. 
Okay, I think the next step here is just look inside to see if there's anything that we need to be worried about first before we even try to power it up. I've learned my lesson already. I've, I've done complete restorations on systems like this with a power supply such as this, where at, it's all been clean. I have all the footage stored. And, uh, and yeah, I don't have a power supply because I can't get the thing working or find a replacement. Definitely want to try that out because it does look pretty gunked up and I think we need to do some work on that. First thing I'm going to do is uh, unscrew this thumb screw here. Nothing fancy. I love that type of access to the to a case. Just so much easier than taking out a bunch of tools and stuff. So we'll pop that open here and get it open. And there we are. So we have a completely filthy, dirty case. Okay, so we have that uh, power supply here. Now it is ATX. I'd like to plug that in just to test it. I can use the power supply tester before we try anything on. I mean, at least that way we can double check to make sure that that is going to work for us. It looks like the 20 plus four pin here. I've gone ahead and plugged in the power cord to the back of that power supply. I heard a little high pitched whine and then it went away immediately. So that's a good sign. Now let's get this kind of situated here and see if we can plug in this to the tester. Uh, I think we're good. I mean, outside of a big puff of dust that came out of the back, even the fans running there, no problem. So. You know what? We're off to a good start with this system, at least the very least to be able to continue putting the efforts into cleaning the system because I think it's, uh, yeah, we'll continue on down that path. I do see a flopping around CPU cooler and fan here. So we're going to remove that right away because we don't want that continuing to flop around in there. And I don't want there to be any damage to the system, especially if we're going to be cleaning this here. And let's just pull that out. There we go. So, I mean, we have an Intel uh, branded. Uh, he's sinking the fan and my goodness gracious it is absolutely just caked with dirt i mean what else would we expect on this channel right i mean look at that i mean a nice comfy blanket in here i'm now full of it i'm going to sneeze soon it's all awesome okay we're gonna put that aside thank you for everybody who does not clean their computers so in here we have a, an intel core 2 duo and i'm just seeing if i can get the model number here now I'm having a hard time seeing with the reflection here of what this exactly is in terms of a CPU. So we're gonna get this all cleaned up and get this posting to see exactly what we have in here for a CPU. But you can see that the motherboard, like you can see that for years, the dirt has just been, look at that. Dirt has just been absolutely collecting in the system and it's caked. When I say caked, like on the motherboard, like look at that, like that is absolutely just filled so we gotta get that all cleaned up i mean that's just unacceptable we're gonna get that all cleaned up it doesn't look like we have any memory installed here but that is ddr2 memory slots by the looks of things so we definitely want to get those scrubbed out before we attempt trying to plug things into that it looks like we have a mix of sata and ide so our sata ports down below and we have our ide connector header right on the motherboard there and then we have all of our caps i'm just taking a look here i do have one very bad cap right here. And so I have no idea if the motherboard is it going to be reactive or not. And the same thing with another bad cap here. Actually, three of them for sure uh, that are bad. And I don't think I have these caps in stock here. Not sure if this is going to work or not. You know, nothing like good old cap juice on top of everything, all the dirt on the motherboard. But yeah, definitely want to get that cleaned up. And we're going to power it on just to see anything blows up. And then we also have a floppy connector by the looks of things down here. So I was curious to see if it would support that and it does. This motherboard is an MSI MS-7528 version one. I believe it's one, yeah, I just scraped off the, the zero there. So, I mean, that's a motherboard. If you wanna look that up, you definitely can. But I mean, it's pretty pretty standard motherboard in terms of, you know, considering the case itself, it's really cool to see this type of motherboard inside of a case like this. I mean, we could take that out completely and transplant that into another case. Again, I'm just a little worried about those caps. We'll be interested in for a show. I'll keep the camera on for that one. Now on the front here, we have what looks like kind of like a custom type um, front on this case that can come off. And so let me just look at that here. I mean, that's our DVD-ROM drive that's here. It looks like to be a SATA connection. And let me just see if I can, I see little hooks over here. So I'm gonna see if I can, oh, there we go, perfect. Okay, 
serviceable, fully serviceable. We have the case opened up here where we can actually go in now and install the new hard drive that we want to do. Okay, so I think we are good to go here. There's nothing else to do. I'm going to, you know, I'd like to get that at least tested now. I mean, the power supply is one thing to test, but seeing those caps the way they are, I just want to be absolutely sure that I'm not going to be running into any problems. I don't want to put all the efforts and work into this if I have to order some caps. So I definitely want to get this plugged in. So I'm going to do that first. And if we can get at least posting, then I think it's worth the restoration. And if not, then it's going to be a short video. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's get this plugged in. Let's get this sorted out and get the bench all set up with the keyboard, mouse, and everything ready to go. Let's see if we get the system fired up temporarily. Okay, and here we are, and I've set up a temporary view here. So I have the power supply plugged in, which is making this interesting noise for sure. Pretty sure that needs to be taken apart and cleaned up, or there's probably a bad cap forming in there. And let's hit that power button and see what happens. Nothing. Huh, let me take a look at this. Just going to take a look to make sure all of our switches are plugged in. Power, power LED is unplugged, but that shouldn't cause any difficulty. Okay, and we're back after I did a bunch of troubleshooting. So, despite the fact that the power supply tested just fine, it and is still testing fine, ironically enough, it is not powering up the system. It just will not work. And I put a load on it as well, not just the power supply tester. I put a hard drive on it, and it did spin up. So... I don't know what is going on exactly with this power supply. Now it is winking, making a weird noise, like a high-pitched kind of whine that kind of varies back and forth. I don't know what exactly that is. If you know that, please let me know down in the comments. But I mean, obviously, it's going to require some testing and things like that and possibly, uh, you know, to be corrected and repaired. Now, that said, I did take the one of the power supplies I had, one of the new power supplies I featured in another video, and put it into the system, plugged it in, and put a stick of memory in here. And let's see what happens. It spins up. And we have post. So, it's an Intel Core 2 Duo at 4300 at 1.8 gigahertz. So, it is detecting the 512 megs of RAM that I have in there. And it just goes right into indicating that the CMOS battery is wrong, which is which is fine because we know it is. So the board seems to be running okay despite the caps that are bad. This computer definitely would benefit from a recapping for sure to extend its life as well as an investigation into the actual power supply. So we're going to end up doing that. Not in today's video. Today's video scope already has gone a little sideways. So what I'm going to do is get the computer all cleaned up and get everything kind of scrubbed up inside here, get it looking really nice, get it all to a point where I'm able to then work on the actual board uh, in the future to take it out and do a recapping, uh, as well as get the power supply out of the system just to kind of clean up the wires, basically get it all ready and get an operating system installed, and test it all out. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that now. Okay, here we are set back up on the bench in a position where we're able to do a little more to the system as needed here. So what we're going to do, the very first thing I'm going to do is remove this power supply from the mix. Now, you know, I'm not, uh, I may take a look inside just real quick just to see what's going on in there, but it's it's an older system. It probably was retired uh, and or they had an issue with the power supply, couldn't find another one at the time or just didn't, didn't need it anymore. Okay, so I have that fan moved out of there. Let's unplug it from the header on the motherboard. There we are. So now we have the power supply. We should be able to take that right out of there now. So we have the power supply out and I'm just going to take the SATA cables out because our intention here is to get this kind of cleaned up. And I just temporarily put that uh, CPU on there. So I'm just going to remove the CPU from the board, including the fan header. There we are. And there, so you can see how filthy that is. We'll do that later. And we're going to take that stick of RAM back out. That was just temporary, but I mean, we can use that uh, along amongst other RAM if I can find some more memory. Okay, so yeah, I mean, here we are. Now I think what it's time to do is get this kind of cleaned up. I mean, I'm gonna get the anti-static brushes here. So we want those two here, and then we can get all the nooks and crannies, get this all cleaned up. So you know what, let's get uh, right to it.
Okay, so we have the main chassis cleaned out here and it's looking fairly good here now that we have all that kind of dirt and grime cleaned out of the system, which is just absolutely good. Just feels really good to work within a system like this that's nice and clean. Okay, so we have a couple sticks of one gig uh, DDR2 memory. We're just gonna pop in here real quickly. And I mean, the system's nice and clean now. I cleaned those slots up pretty well with some isopropyl alcohol and some a brush there. So we got those installed now, which is good, nice and sturdy. Now what I'd like to do is move this aside and start to work on getting this cleaned up here, the fan. Okay, for the next step here, we gotta clean this uh, Intel fan out. We know it works fine. It's just really, really, really dirty. So we're gonna do a similar thing as we did with the uh, computer itself and just do a little fast forward as we go through this and get this all kind of scrubbed out, cleaned out, get all the dirt and grime out of there and get it all wiped down. Here we go. And there we are. We have a nice new clean fan. Well, not new, but new to us, of course, because it's all clean. Okay, now that we have that kind of situated, what I want to do is take this hard drive here. I have a Hitachi, and then we have a 7200 RPM, and we have one terabyte. So I'd like to use that in this system. I'm just going to mount it as per the picture here on the side that tells me how to get it all sorted out here. So we get that put in, and it has little like little rubber grommets here. And fortunately, you know, it does take a certain type of screw to do that, just because of the length of the screw so i'm using those it did come with them so that's good so i'm gonna get those installed here so at least we get the uh, drive chassis all ready to go so when we go to pop this in the computer it'd be fairly simple to connect everything together and i'm aiming it this way the cables this way because that's what uh, it's indicating here in the picture is the drive spindle up and having the um the ports exposed on the other side there so that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to move that aside now we're gonna set the computer back up on the bench. So we'll get some thermal grease and we'll get that installed now. There we are, we have the heat sink and fan nicely mounted on there. And I did a jump cut just because there was some messing around with, you know, this kind of mounting system. These are kind of like little pegs that expand behind the motherboard when you pop them all down. So it took some fin angling around there, but we got it done. I'm going to pop in our drive data cables. So we have that in there now as well. And that's it. I just want to get those installed and get, we'll use those little you know, kind of clips that manage the cables there. And we don't have our power supply because our power supply is bad. We're going to be using that temporary power supply. So I want to be sure I can access that. So I'm going to get this all kind of cleaned up. We're going to get the SATA cable connected to the motherboard and we're going to get the power supply kind of rooted in such a way that we can get this uh, put down inside because once it's down, it's very difficult to access the power for the CD ROM or the hard drive. So we'll get that right now. Okay, and we're back. And all I've done here is I just fished the wires for the power supply through the back where the old power supply is. This power supply is quite large, long cables, so it does have the ability to do that. This is only temporary, just because I want to get the case kind of in a or is this system in a, a state of repair that I know that when I go to, to remove this temporary power supply that we are good to go for a new one and it's going to be exciting when we get to that stage you know I, I know I'll be going and recapping this board entirely the more I look at these caps the more and more bulging so I definitely want to get that sorted out. Okay, so I have the main ATX power supply plugged in there and I'm gonna get the four pin connected here as well. There we are. And this is what we're gonna be using to kind of get the system up and running for what we wanna do. So we have our power supply, obviously, and we have our hard drive in there and we have our DVD reader here. We also have our processor, all nice brand new thermal grease. We have it, all the board all cleaned up. We reconnected the front header panel there for the USB and the audio. So that's good to go there now. And one thing I forgot to mention was that this is PCI 16, one and two PCI, but they're all of the small form factor, uh, low profile. I don't have any low profile cards. Otherwise I would definitely be testing out 
a different type of video card in here just to see what we could do with it. But you know what? Not every computer was built for gaming. Not every computer was meant for gaming. And where this became came out of the hospital industry, uh, medica medical industry, I, I just figured, assuming that tangent is what that is, I just assumed, you know, it was used for business. So we're going to get that up and running in that capacity. So I'm going to flip this around, get it all kind of situated, get the case on. I'm going to protect this, get the cover on, and we'll start to go through the motions of getting the system posting. Here we go. And we're back. And I'm just absolutely excited to have this all set back up on the bench. The tangent desktop pc you know what we need a little more tlc to the tangent pc <laughs> see what i did there uh we're going to have to take this and do some additional work on it like we have a power supply sticking out the back there just temporarily just until we can get the other power supply that we had taken out of this machine repaired because it is proprietary to the system so we definitely want to get that sorted out i have a source that has a couple of those power supplies as well that i want to try out so we'll go down that road here shortly but we definitely have a great looking machine here all cleaned up on the inside we know it's all ready to go we also need to recap this board so taking the board of the machine won't be too difficult so we'll do another video on that but what i want to do is i want to get this system up and running i want to get this you know basically to the point where we're at a good point of restoration you know to do that i think what we need to do is install windows vista and the sticker that's on this there's actually a couple there's windows vista business oem and there's also windows 7 key that's on this as well and so what i'd like to do is install the vista business just because you know, I know Windows 7 was a better OS and all that. And but but to be honest with you, we haven't done Vista on the channel. And quite frankly, I would just like to see that on here. So first thing we're going to do is at least get the system posting and make sure we get it all set up. Because I also replaced the CMOS battery as well in here. Just wanted to call that out. And it's complaining about that right now, probably. There we are. Sure enough. CMOS warrant settings are wrong. Date, not, date and time not set. So we're going to go into the... Uh, set up here in a moment but i want to cover that this is again we already talked about this a moment ago when we had some kind of semi posting going on so we have the intel core 2 cpu 4300 running at 1.8 gigahertz so that's awesome DRAM frequency ddr2 running a dual channel 800 and we have two gigs of ram in here which is awesome we have our sata ide hard disk and we have our sata adapt pc to rom drive so the first thing we're going to do is go into setup and beautiful, beautiful setup. I just love the look of this. I wanted to put the monitor on the desktop computer just to come kind of complete that look, but just the angle I have everything going for the sake of the setting up. Okay, so standard CMOS features. Oh my goodness, this is not 2009, it's uh, 2023. So let's get this all set up now. So system information, there we go. We have everything that's in here that uh, we already went over at the beginning of the screen. So we know that's all fine. So advanced BIOS features set up. There's nothing on here I really need to do too much with at this moment. Our goal here is just to get the computer up and running. Integrated peripherals, so we have USB support and we have our onboard LAN controller and we're gonna keep the option ROM off, but the HD audio controller as well is enabled, that's fine. And then we have other devices here, but all of this is fine. There's just resources for the common parallel ports, which is great. Uh, power management, we're not gonna touch. Hardware monitor, you know, it's running nice and cool here now uh, with the thermal paste we just added and that, uh, that fan that we all cleaned up and you can see it's running nice and slowly there which is great okay so oh and also to mention i did not put this fan back in just because i did try to remove uh it's it's very extremely stiff and it hasn't made a difference yet so i'm going to make some modifications to this see if i can save this fan if not it's fine we can get a different cha uh, chassis fan installed as well okay but everything's looking great on this power supply obviously i mean it's it's a brand new power supply so it's it should be working just fine so we're going to go into save and exit setup yes that's perfect. Okay, so it's detecting Windows because there was Windows probably on the drive that I had here historically. We're going to throw in the Vista Business OEM 64-bit, and we're going to get that installed. So I'm just going to restart, and I'm going to do the temporary uh, startup here. Coming up with the Windows Vista setup screen. It's been a long time since I've seen this. 
Okay, and here we are at the Windows Vista setup screen. My goodness, I mean, it looks a lot like Windows 7, I tell you, <laughs> considering this was the predecessor of it. Okay, hit next on this. We're going to click on install now. And it should give me some drive options here in a moment, just to kind of give me, you know, what we're going to do with the drive. I mean, there's data on the drive now, so we're going to get that all cleaned up here as well. Okay. So there was a little hiccup as I was installing the operating system. The drive just became unreadable. The DVD drive that we had in there, that was what was originally in the system. So I found a Super Write Master uh, Speed Plus drive that was in one of the other <laughs> videos I had done. So I was able to get that drive out and use that to install on here. I mean, heck, the system just got an upgrade <laughs> to the drive just to do that to get this installed, but also the fact that it will now be used, uh, could be used as a DVD burner or whatever in the system, which I think is wonderful. Okay, let's continue on with the Vista installation. All right, here we are at the desktop setup. So we're gonna choose the retro recall and choose a picture. We're gonna go Mr. Mr. Puppy Dog. That's what we want today. We're uh, we're all nice and vista e with Mr. Puppy Dog. All right, hit next. And our desktop is gonna be the classic desktop. I mean, we can't do anything else but that. Next, and we're gonna use recommended settings. Absolutely, we'll adjust all the time zone. We're all good to go there. Next, thank you, no problem. Now, the Windows desktop, Windows Vista desktop. And again, I had mentioned that this is Windows Vista business. So this is slightly different in terms of feature sets. I mean, Windows came with different versions, Windows Vista did. So you had the starter edition that would go on certain laptops and entry level systems, then you would go to home premium. So it gave you more of like a feature rich set of like multimedia features. Then you had business, which kind of included some of those features, not all like uh, DVD maker wouldn't be included. I don't believe that uh, media center was included either in the uh, business edition, but you had encrypted file options, you had remote desktop options, and you know, really things aimed for business. And then you had ultimate, and that had all of them. So every single check mark you could get. All right, so we have our system and maintenance welcome center. It's been a long time since I've seen this, that's for darn sure. You know, getting started with Windows, so you had all your different options that you'd like to do. And of course, offers from Microsoft, which we're not going to talk about right now. So we're going to close that for now. We're going to close this as well. And remember widgets, love widgets. I used to, I used to play with them quite a bit. Like I said, I didn't love the operating system. Uh, there were certain things I did like about it. Okay. Let's go into device manager real quickly here, just cause I want to, oh yeah, the user account control. That's fun. Um, I just want to make sure that we're good for display adapters. We are not. So it's not detecting the drivers for that board and for sound. Uh, well, it is detecting the sound by the looks of things. Let me see if I can get the sound all working here. Okay, we have plugged in the speakers now and the sound. Let's go back into control panel. I will tell you that the computer is pretty snappy at the moment. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it seems to be working pretty good. I heard some clicks there, so that's good. Let's go into sound and under sounds, let's take a look at the Windows startup. Uh, Windows, good old Windows startup, wherever that is. Oh, it was log on, maybe that's what it is. Ah, Windows Vista, gotta love it. Okay, so we do have the Windows sound working now. I would like to get this graphics card working for sure, just because of the fact that, you know, we, we are working on trying to get the system restored. And according to this, we have some Windows updates. Oh no, we have uh, malware protection is not active. The good old Windows Security Center. Do you remember Windows Live One Care? Oh my goodness, remember that? That was such a cool little program that, you know, any virus, any spyware, firewall, all in one, 
it was a service you paid for. And I believe that there's something online now that's reactivating this. I think <laughs> the joys of the retro community, I just love it. But uh, I believe that they're restoring that actual service back up just so you can experience it with Windows Vista. Remember the Windows Experience Index? <laughs> How many of you guys actually went in there and did that? I know I did. I wanted to see as much as I can get a better score as part of this. And, you know, I, I get why they were doing that, you know, just to say, okay, rate your system and that seems to be the failing point so go ahead and do some more like upgrade some more and the next thing i'm going to do is uh, i like that you can upgrade windows vista anytime you can go and purchase a new key and, and upgrade vista yeah just so much on the on the operating system itself that uh, brings back quite a bit of memories on this and you know again this is pretty snappy believe it or not i mean i don't have a whole heck of a lot running on this now again just because it is uh, newly installed but yeah i'm not seeing any sort of sluggishness right now but I'm not running a whole lot of programs right now outside of the widgets that we have. Okay, so I have a trusty disk that I was able to get right from the manufacturer's website. So I do have access to a bunch of drivers, including a BIOS update, which I will do in a future video when I go to recap this entire motherboard. But for now, I'm just going to go into simply of going in and getting this all kind of set up. Okay, here we are with the Intel graphics auto installer. Let's hit next. And yes, uh, yes, install anyway. I verified it. We're good. Remember all those warnings with driver signings and things like that? Uh, yeah, definitely an interesting operating system for sure. Definitely setting the stage. A lot of this stuff was either integrated already into Windows 7 and just didn't, it wasn't a nuisance. It was just kind of a standard. Uh, whereas this is kind of like, eh, you know, we're going to introduce some new things. And I think that was something that really kind of affected people when they were doing the upgrades from Windows XP and the same thing with utilizing the operating system. So that people stayed with Windows XP because they didn't want to go to Vista. They didn't want to deal with all the compatibility problems that they were going to experience by doing so. Now, if you purchased a PC that was designed for Windows Vista, I mean, I use that term loosely, at the same time doing that, but generally, if you had a computer that was designed for it, it generally worked out of the box, as long as you had something like that. Now, if you had a system, obviously, they had mentioned before that you had to upgrade, and we're going to go restart, you had to upgrade, then yeah, you know what? You had to, uh, it ran into some problems. So you had to go through and configure everything as you went. Ah, uh, the Windows Vista startup sound. Classic again. And here we are back at the Windows desktop with a much different resolution, graphics resolution. <laughs> what do we set up now? We are at, uh, let's see, we're at 1280 by 1024, the highest 32 color and everything. Okay, so we're going to turn that down a bit just because of filming and I want to make sure everybody can still see the desktop. But as you can see, we're able to get it all installed and that's awesome. You know, we'll go back under control panel again just to kind of look at this. Uh, yeah, just it's really cool to have this again back in back up and running. So, I mean, under disk drives, we have our disk drive there, just our hard drive display adapters. It's actually showing the right display adapter now, which is great. As I noticed earlier, as I noted earlier, sorry, we had to update the DVD burner, but now we actually have that installed. So now we have a super right drive. I'm going to work on the Realtek driver. I believe it's just a matter of installing a proper driver for it. We'll get that installed, no problem. There's our sound high definition audio device. I believe there's some third party drivers out there for the onboard. It's using Vista's drivers. So I'm gonna leave it at that for today because we did cover quite a bit getting the system kind of dug out of that e-waste pile from the big haul that we got. Essentially got this system all cleaned up inside and we're able to test it and it is working. Despite the fact we have almost every cap on the board is bad. And again, that power supply needs to be fixed up. So I think for today, we'll stop here in our next video regarding this particular PC. It may not be right away because I have to order some parts and get some things sorted out. But essentially what we'll do is we'll take it apart. We'll recap this motherboard. We'll get the proper power supply installed back in the computer to kind of get rid of this temporary solution that we have going on. We may even upgrade this to Service Pack 2 Vista and complete the complete look of this system. But I'm extremely happy that one out of all those EUA systems, we're talking 28 of them, is working. On the bench, some modifications to get everything up and running, but well worth it. If you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification button. Change it to all. You'll be notified of new content such as this. 
Please leave a comment down below. What was your experience with Windows Vista? Do you Did you ever experience any tangent PCs in your life? I'd love to hear about it. I reply to absolutely every one of my comments, always making new content. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you to everybody who supports the Retro Recall. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.